All right, um, as we're getting into part seven of the playground modeling, uh, we're going to be dealing with some more complex shapes. Uh, specifically, we're going to be dealing with the uh, spiral slide. <clears throat> so in the spiral slide, basically, uh, we're going to be using a few commands that we've kind of alluded to. Um, we're going to use the swept command again, and we're going to be using the arc tool, um, explicitly using the arc tool to go ahead and make sure that we're getting the right shape uh, for the slide to go ahead and continue all the way down. Uh, we're going to have to be careful with some of the dimensioning, um, but uh, we'll go ahead and uh, get started with this. So, in Onshape, as usual, we're creating our document, spiral slide, and then we're going to have to uh, start laying out the geometry. So. One of the first ones that we're going to do is we're going to take care of that inner circle, the, um, the protected area for the slide. And we know that that's going to have a radius of 8 inches. Okay? So we can go ahead and, uh, let's see, let's go ahead and create a sketch on the top. Uh, we'll need it at least a little bit later. And we're going to create the circle with a radius of 8 inches. So we know that that's a diameter of 16 inches. Okay? Uh, there's definitely some size to this. The second part that we're going to create uh, is going to be on the front view plane. Uh, so if it'll let me select the front view. Okay. We're going to have to create the arc at some distance, kind of a little bit away. So in this case, we're going to use the three-point arc tool. We're going to get started on kind of that outermost point some distance out and then a value underneath it okay and then we know that that's going to be the inner one so we'll have a line going a little bit in on each side okay. and then using the same line tool kind of do the same thing again and then you use the arc tool to go ahead and connect those together Okay. Now we do need to go ahead and take care of some of the dimensioning in here. So we go back to the spiral. We know that the, um, the width between the arcs, so we use D to go ahead and get the outer arc points is 24. Okay. The inner arc points, you may have noticed, were 22. Okay. And then where that one went ahead and already set up, that actually needs to be 1. Okay. to go ahead and get some symmetry in there. And we need to go ahead and then set the radiuses for those. Okay. So the radius of the inner one is 11 inches. The radius of the outer one is 12. So going back to dimensions, click on the inner one. That's 11 inches, 12 inches. Okay. We're mostly just locking those in place. Um, Something's still moving around though. Oh, we didn't actually get that bound. So we're going to go ahead and set that as the radius of eight inches. Okay. Just make sure that it kind of gets locked in place the way it should be. Okay. So we then have two portions that we need to take care of. Okay. One is we need to create kind of the spiral path, okay, and then we need to make sure that the height is right. So what I want you to pay closer attention to is this is 132 inches from the very top to the very bottom. Okay? But we know that the very top of that arc okay, is 12 inches difference from the very bottom. Okay? So we know that if we say that we want a height of the spiral to be 132 inches, that means that that spiral is going to go all the way down until the very top is hitting 132 inches from the top we're going to account for that difference with a little bit of math. Okay? So, to create the spiral path for this to actually travel, okay, in Onshape it's actually called the Helix tool. Okay? And in the Helix tool, we can tell it that we want to have it based on turns, pitch, height and turns, height and pitch, turns and pitch. For the dimensions that we were given, height and turns are going to be the better option and we can tell it that we're grabbing that circle and that the height of that is not 132 but 132 minus 12 that radius difference okay, 
you might notice that it's pointed upwards. We're going to tell it to go downwards. Okay. And then as we zoom out a little bit, it's got four loops. I think three loops is going to be a bit better. Okay. So you can choose how many loops you need. Um, just be mindful that so too many loops is going to make it a little hard for someone to actually play around with. Okay. So with the spiral finished, the next step is we're going to use that swept command again to go ahead and, in this case, select all of the surfaces that we care about. And then the path sweep um, is going to be the spiral we created. Now you'll notice that it took them a little while for that one to actually process. There's a lot of complex math that the computer is doing to go ahead and create that model. But at this point, we can take kind of a rough measurement. We can click on the very top point and the very bottom point. Okay? And it's a little hard to see, but in the bottom right hand corner, um, let me change my screen. In the very bottom right hand corner, we can see that there's a Z change, so the vertical height changes that 132 inches. So just like in real life we're supposed to take measurements, you can take some measurements within the CAD software as well. Okay? So just be mindful as uh, you uh, proceed in doing some of your drawings. So right now that's fully dimensioned. Actually that should make all of your parts fully uh, dimensioned, fully sketched out. So when you go back into your uh, your worksheets, your, uh, the folder where we've created all of these, even though that may not be up to date, all of the parts that we need have been created. Okay. So next up is we're going to start getting into some of the sub-assemblies and then creating the final assembly to finalize this project.